you stripped away, stripped away accolades, accolades and, and, and radio play, play and, and record, sales record sales and awards, and awards there is no awards. doubt in my mind that this is what I would still do. do. KL Monday, Hong Kong Wednesday, Seoul Thursday, Tokyo Friday, Manila Saturday, I'll die on Sunday. Well, where are we financially? And I'll let you know if I'm good. <laughs> Nick, I, I, I think we're gonna lock. I think we're gonna lock Singapore down. I think that's better. But, I think that's brilliant. I think that'd be the best plan. All right, let me work on it. I'm not fully aware of how other people approach live projects like this, but I know that when, when I think back of the records that affected me, especially the live records that affected me, like Andre Kraut's live at Carnegie Hall, live in London, these huge records, I don't know if they, if they knew they were affecting history or not, but so we went to center staging in Burbank and said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do this right. We're going to give it our all. No matter what we do, we're going all in no matter what. The hope is that these records are timeless and they live on, they connect with generations to come. But I just want to be a good steward over the time I have here on earth and, and the songs that I'm called to put out. I want to make sure that we do them right. I've known Israel before New Breed, before uh, Praise and Worship Leader. I remember him as uh, the guitarist playing along with Fred and a couple other people. So I've known him for a while. Man, he's a powerhouse and definitely a, a, an amazing force in what we do in our industry and in our, you know, he's, he's, he's helped pave another road that needed to be paved. I think Philippines, if they're with us and they like bring it, we may do six, seven songs from the new record. You know, I've always believed that if the vision that you have does not scare you, like crazy scare you, the vision is too small. You guys know this is a bonsai run, right? Like, there is no rest at all. And we're gonna be jet lagging hard.
What I appreciate the most about Israel and what he has done is that he pretty much pioneered the new era of praise and worship because no one was doing it like he was doing it at the time. What amazed me so much about Israel is that when I first heard of him, I had never heard a light-skinned brother saying that good. You know, he was so light-skinned, but so much soul. And, 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 and the combo just went pow. Just light-skinnedness and soul. It, just, it was just like, you know, like, it, it, was, it was like Yabro and Peoples, you know, peaches and herb. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> BB and CC. Right now, you see Asia in every news story. I mean, something is happening in Asia all the time. For us to be a part of this and, and to take whatever platform we have and really focus it on Asia right now, it goes beyond music. It goes beyond the songs. It really does rest where the people are. And it's all about people right now. And, and everything that we do is about serving people. It's about loving people. It's about pointing people to the love of God. Israel Houghton and I started years ago um, leading worship together. He was on guitar, I was on keys. He was Israel, I was kind of new breed. That was about all we had. <laughs> Israel has had a heart for Asia for a long time and this is amazing that God has really sent us uh, over to that area and saturating the earth with the sound of worship. We're celebrating 15 years of New Breed this year. It has kind of been nonstop. I feel like we've been on tour for 15 years straight. I feel like uh, it's just been one really great milestone after another. Check, check. Singapore was really the first time that we all came together as band, vocals and technical, sound and lighting, to actually rehearse and run the songs through in any way. It was not something that we did with months of pre-planning and organisation. It was actually fairly last minute and we just learned to roll with the punches. Monday. Yeah, Only Monday. It would have been better off to send them their deposit yeah. back for the game. Not even that, because hey, the brief is if you're not going to provide this, and it's accepted to the letter. To the letter. Today. Today. Interaction between the tech team and singers is always difficult because they pretty much just sleep all day and turn up when you've done all your hard work and you're finished sweating and just come and take the cream off the top of all, or everything you've done. No, it's not really like that. The singers, our singers, our, the musicians, you know, everyone in this team, you know, are incredible people. Top of their game as far as their talent and skills concerned. Financially, we were like flying by faith in many cases. If I didn't have John Ward and Ruby Duncan, like, holding things together. If, if Gally Molina was not boots on the ground in all of these places just making stuff happen. And you watch these guys galvanize around a vision because we realize that, that the thing of which we're a part is greater than the part we play. And so all of us come together to do something significant. We'll, we'll make another opportunity for you to bless yeah, us. Come yeah. <laughs> you come three more times, you get the <laughs> frequent flyer. <laughs> You live! I don't know what this means, but God said fall back. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Did you see that YouTube God video? God says know your place. It's, it's, it's uh, like looking at your brother, you know, that you've kind of poured into or you've kind of, you know, started him in the direction because, you know, uh, that's basically I'm the older guy and he's the younger brother. and and uh, But I'm very proud, you know, to have, you know, a small part of uh, what he's done. And it has definitely affected, you know, you know, me, you know, to a deg great degree. You know, a couple songs that I have that are big deal songs have been vibed off of Israel's tracks. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I've got this like deep cough, I don't know, but it's, it's wearing me out.
and then to go do the biggest biggest project we've ever done and be feeling like I'm at 65 percent as a gospel group and as a worship team you know we've been we've been going into places like Indonesia and Malaysia and the Philippines and Korea and Japan and Singapore since 08 and we realize that a lot of our contemporaries in this particular genre they don't go to Asia so we're we're fine with that because you know we've we've been able to develop really great relationships with the uh, fan base so to speak people who just follow the new breed movement Israel Houghton is a dear friend of mine and one of the most amazing worship leaders I've ever met. He joined forces with us here at Lakewood about 10 years ago, and he's brought not only incredible talent, incredible leadership, but Israel has an amazing way to connect with people. Working with Israel is a really fluid experience. He's a, an incredible musician and singer, uh, but there's so much more than that. Working with him actually forces the best out of people. Israel has been key in developing this genre of praise and worship. Israel has been key in writing songs from the heart toward God. And so there's no way to really express how his music has impacted me. Just that it has, as it has an entire globe. The world is singing Israel Houghton's music because that's what that's the that's that signature God put on him, and his pen is very powerful. All right, let's run risen, and then I want to I want to mess with our God I'll do it. Not yet. Where the ends? No, I like it. Um. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Are these songs gonna work? Are these songs gonna make sense in Asia? They might have made sense in Houston or LA, but will they make sense in Asia? Will they connect with the people? Is anybody gonna come? I remember Israel when he was on the back you know, on the background playing guitar behind Fred Hammond. Israel reintroduced and globalized praise and worship from the black church. Fred Hammond kind of introduced it a few years before that, but Israel took it and took it to the world. And he did it in an amazing way with an amazing heart and amazing spirit. So I love his music, but I love him as a man more than even his music. Everybody coming, giving it all and um, it just means a lot. It really means a lot. This project is getting bigger by the moment, which is making me feel smaller by the moment. But we're here because God has always been able to trust us to stay small. Yeah. yeah. God has always been able to trust us to just go, I don't care how good it gets, how many accolades come, it's all for you. And. I just believe that there is a challenge now that says, are you still going to do that? And our willingness to just believe that God would use us in spite of ourselves, that's what got us here. Yes, there's work to be done. Yes, something might burn on the grill. Yes, we might miss a cue, but I am here at the feet of Jesus mm. right now. And that is far more important than, so than overthinking where we're going, what we're doing, what's my next move, what's yeah. my next song, what's my next part. Most importantly, God is gonna get the glory. Yes. And your kids and my kids and their friends and this next generation is gonna hopefully see something that turns the lights on for them that says, that's what I wanna do. Let us sing something that makes young people come alive. This 
is not about us, man. This is not about us. And I want to connect with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I want us to get back to that place where you just don't know a thing. Thank you. Let's pray. Let's believe God for great things today. Most importantly, lean back and just and just enjoy the presence of God. Sit at his feet for a minute, even in moments where we're... This is the problem with international travel right here. They kept telling me I'm overweight. I kept saying, I'm sir, working out. Sir, I'm working sir. out. I'm not too heavy. <laughs> I'm literally carrying my shoes. I'm carrying my shoes. <laughs> but we're saving dollars. We're saving money. Because we need to save souls. Saving money so we can save souls. Hallelujah. Am I right? We're, we're nuts. I mean, we really are a little bit crazy to, to schedule a show Friday night, Saturday night, two on Sunday, Monday night. <laughs> we're nuts. And getting excited, man. Woke up early this morning, just ready for tonight and uh, feeling good, man. Really, really feeling good. Relaxed, chill. Not to go get on a helicopter and see the city from a different angle and go visit a friend of ours, Billy Sindoro, who's also a pastor in this town. Ah, good to see Billy, you. how are you, man? Good to see you. How are you, how are you been, sir? Uh, welcome back. Sorry. Welcome back, sorry. Let's go. My name is Billy Sindoro. I'm active in the marketplace as well as in the ministry. Currently, I'm with my colleagues and my friends uh, leading a church called Christ Cathedral in Jakarta, Indonesia. I met Israel three years ago. I've been very impressed to see, to see what he does in America, to see what he does uh, globally. And recently I've heard about his burden for Asia, also for Indonesia, I'm deeply touched. You know, he comes with music, gospel music. That's powerful. Israel can do what many people cannot do. And I'm sure and I believe through his music, create a big impact for the city here, for the nation, and for many countries in Asia.
I feel like momentum is shifting downward, then I'm gonna go to something familiar, get them back with me. Because it is pretty freaking daunting to go to a new environment and do 12 brand new songs. Because, you know, so much of what we do is like, off, you know, when we're doing a regular new grade night, the band knows, I think I'm gonna start with the video and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do this song. And that's all they know. <laughs> Seriously, every night. But we've logged so much time together as yeah. a band, like everyone, it's actually fun. Dancing. Yeah. He's so awesome. a great guy, um, an amazing person, great musician, um, and a great teacher as well. One of the things I really love about Israel is he loves his family and he has no problem expressing that. And, and I'm, I'm a big family guy myself, so it's comforting to know I'm not the only one who is supporting family like that. It is crazy to say 25 years, it's been a, it's been a long time of doing something that I love doing, that I'm passionate doing, and it's not gotten old. All these years later, there are always new discoveries. There are always new things to figure out about the presence of God and, and seeing him in a new way every time we come together. We prayed those prayers like, God, use us. Please use us to have impact in the world. And I think you pray those prayers sometimes thinking, eh, 10 years or so, we might see see a blip, you know, we might see something happen. And, and the fact that it happened so quickly and so consistently and so rapidly uh, kind of shocked us. And we, we almost weren't prepared for God to actually answer our prayer. My story really starts right here in, in Oceanside, Beach Community. My mother was 17 when she got pregnant. My mother's white, my father's black. My mom ended up here, eight months pregnant with me, had been doing drugs throughout her entire pregnancy. And there was a lot of pressure around her to have an abortion and just kind of move on with the, with the plans for her life. When she was eight months pregnant, her and my father split up. It was about as bad a situation as you can imagine. The state of California here said, we're gonna take your child away from you because you're, you're considered an unfit mother because of the drugs that are in your system. They were already kind of pressuring her to just sign me over to the property of the state before I was ever born. And while all that's happening, she's walking down 
the boulevard right, right around here, and a lady saw her from across the street and came over to where she was, and she, she said, listen, I don't, I don't know who you are, but I, I felt like I had to come tell you that you're loved and you're not forgotten. And she just shared the simple message of the gospel with her. And literally right there on the street corner, something changed in her life. She had never been told that. She had been raised in a, in a Catholic school her whole life, but never really knew that she was loved by God. When this lady sort of like revealed that to her, everything changed, literally everything changed in that moment. She sat down on the, on the street corner there and said a simple prayer with this lady. By the time I was born, all of those drugs were out of her system. She never touched another drug again from that moment, which I know is an absolute miracle. Here we are four decades later and everything's all right. I was never taken away and I am blown away by two things. One, a 17 year old's courage to face down the, the pressure and say, no, I'm gonna do what I feel like I'm supposed to do. And two, a woman, an, an, an older woman at that time, being willing to cross the street and cross into somebody's uncomfortable space just to share the love of God with them. I don't know if she had any idea at that moment what she was doing by speaking to this woman and realizing that the ripple effect of her just saying yes to that prompting would literally touch the whole world at some point. And, and all these years later, I, I look back at that moment and realize it's, it is the, the pivotal moment of my whole life before I was even born, that I was destined and really called to this cause, to, to follow the ripple effect of somebody's obedience and somebody's yes. And that's what strikes me every time I get on a stage, you know, and realize, first of all, for 40 plus years, I've been playing with house money. I should have never made it to day one. I heard the first album real, uh, well, my hit me onto it. And I played that album forever and ever. You know, had Tommy Sims on it, you know, killing it, producing it. And then I met his real, and, uh, you know, we just developed our own friendship and brotherhood, and we toured together, and, you know, we've worked together. And, uh, you know, you know, just, you know, just one of those rare gifts to the planet. And, uh, you know, very proud to work with him. And, uh, you know, just to continue the legacy of just, uh, you know, just fair skin gospel. You know, first you had Fred Hammond, you know, which is very, he's very fair, you know, needs a little tan, you know. But it was cool, because Fred came up in the 90s with El DeBarge, so, you know, that's when light skin was in, you know. But now the Chocolate Brothers are taking over, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to talk to Israel, see what we can do about that, you know, because, uh, you know, they're trying to hold on to their place, but, you know, time's up. You don't want to stand up, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're called to serve. We're not just called to pursue some sort of, hey, we made it. It's deeper than that. Why have we been given the platform we've been given? Is it so that we can, you know, update our status page and say, look, you know, look what I did? Or is it that I've been, I've been given a greater platform, a greater sphere of influence so I can serve better? I never go into something going, well, I remember when we did that thing 10 years ago, that was the one. I think it's, I, I think we're constantly looking forward. 
each project has just been whoa every time. It's just been grander and bigger and 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 I think more special each time. And I think that's because the vision is always growing. One of the things I love about Israel is he refuses to let you box him in. As soon as you think, okay, yeah, we got Israel. We know what he's gonna do next. He does something completely different. He won't stop until he's, to, he, he reaches every destiny that God has for him. We're very honored to be here, I know. There's been a couple challenges this afternoon just with the sound and some of those things. We got that all sorted out. So I appreciate your grace and your patience with us. And uh, we are going to start our time. Okay. Hi. How are you? I would say I've never met another individual that works as hard as him, but yet always has time to take a phone call. And the many times that I've called just frustrated about something and just needed a friend to, you know, listen really. And it doesn't matter if he's been in South Africa or in California, Houston, wherever he might be, as busy as he is, he's always able to take my call and just be a friend and someone who will pour into my life. He is definitely the hardest uh, working minister, really, that I've ever been around or been friends with. There's people that can outplay us. There's people that can outride us. There's people that can probably outsing us. They can whatever. But the one thing I'll stack up next to anybody on the planet when it comes to Israel and Newbury, you ain't gonna outwork us. Uh, he has added to the pot of modern liturgy as much as any artist ever. From the, the fast power stuff to the slow ballads, if he never had a direct impact on me, which he does, he had a direct impact on the pot that I draw from. We're gonna put it in. We're gonna rehearse until it's right. We're gonna rehearse all day, all night. We will not stop until it's absolutely perfect. When he opens up and you see him let loose and let God have his way, there's nobody like an Israel. Everybody say, Pretty crazy how um, this whole thing has come together. I feel like this whole trip has been marked by surprises. Like so far, we haven't lost any bags. That's 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 crazy. Just that alone, you know. They lose my bags from Atlanta to Houston. When we locked our dates, we were going to Hong Kong originally, and we had it locked, and then overnight it fell down, and so we locked another one in Hong Kong. Even when we were rehearsing, we had kind of finalized that, only to wake up the next morning, and that fell out as well. Quite literally over the same night, Japan calls and says, hey, you can't do a live in Asia and not come to Tokyo. And uh, we agreed, but I mean, it's like, hey, we're, we're three weeks out. How do you want to pull that off? And we're here. We're here in Tokyo. In Japan tonight, a powerful typhoon. This image captured by a NASA satellite shows the enormity of the storm moving toward the mainland after hitting the island of Okinawa and sweeping away several American servicemen who were taking pictures of the big waves. In Japan, they just hit me right now. They said that the, the news is over 100 flights canceled. We're coming, what, leaving? Cancel period, in or out. The typhoon was gone, but the, after, but the effects of it were not. There was a typhoon scare in Japan, but in every situation we saw God at work. That typhoon moved out of the way, and it was like we saw the hand of God bringing peace literally in the midst of a storm. Bound 
went into the city with the thought of, hey, how cool would it be to go just try out one of these songs in a completely open, people everywhere environment and see if like it works or not, you know? It's like the test of it, these songs sometimes and, and the test of what we do in our recording space and all of that is, does this song work outside of the walls of the church? They won't let him mic it, is that what it is? What are they saying, Micah? They said they're gonna take our names down. They're gonna start taking our names down. Oh, that means we won't get back into the country. If we were in Indonesia, it'd be a wrap. No problem. <laughs> What's up? And now we're all going to jail. <laughs> in Japan. In Japan. Hashtag alive in Asia. Hashtag jail in Japan. <laughs> We we're not going to jail out here, man. And that'll, that'll be a song, you know what I mean? like, Let me begin. And let's, let's, let's set up down that way. He basically gave us like a, like a wink, wink pass over there. Right. Yeah, they, they were like the, the most polite police I've, <laughs> I've ever interfaced with. And they're like, if you go down a little further, you might be able to get away with it. And you might, you might get one song off. Our whole team was there, like the whole New Breed crew was there, hanging out, laughing, having fun, but also realizing that ministry is, is powerful when it's not just to those who expect to hear what, what you're saying, like they understand the language, they're already reached. It's, it's powerful when you get to reach people that, that might not fully know what you're saying, but they feel what you're saying. They can feel the conviction behind, this means something, you know? And it was amazing, because we expected the police to come at any time. And next thing we knew, we had completed 10 of these songs from the record. Outside, in the open, people singing along, people crying, the guy standing there with his Bible, kind of going to the rhythm, and just this look of, man, thank you, God. You do hear my prayer, you know? And I, I, I might be flattering myself. I might be putting too much on that, but that's what it felt like. And I would say right now, even though we've had these great sweeping moments, that was a highlight for me, just watching God respond to somebody and using our few songs to do it. Tokyo, which came together at the last minute, was one of the most special parts of the trip we took. So I breathe your name And I praise my We were at a conference, you know, and uh, we were doing the music, and he was down on the front row, and him and his wife, and uh, and honestly, and I don't normally do this, but at 
at one point, it was like, I saw him and I kept looking, I kept looking, and then finally I just said, hey man, come on, just come on. I didn't know if he knew the songs or if he, anything, I just said, come on. And, uh, but it was just a, a push in his direction. And uh, we just, he came up on stage and he looked around first, like, you know, like, <laughs> you talking to me? I'm like, yeah, man, Dude, come on up. And he came on up and uh, he sang with me and, you know, the rest is history. Ended up uh, in Arizona, Prescott, Arizona. My mother married my stepfather after dating for two weeks. They went on a date on a Wednesday night after church. And two weeks later, they were married on a Wednesday night at that same church. It's crazy. It was the 70s, I guess that's just how it went back then. My brother was born the, the following year after they got married. And, and so to be a black kid in a white family in a Hispanic community and church was uh, made for an interesting uh, upbringing, a lot of diversity in my life. And I was the only black kid I knew for, for, most, of, for most of my upbringing. I remember my first concert, uh, I was five years old. My father took me to an Andre Crouch concert. And I don't know how he maneuvered it, but we were basically front and center. I was 10, 15 feet from, from the legend Andre Crouch. And of course, I'm five. I don't know he's a legend at that point. But I remember kind of the light bulb coming on for me, even at that early of an age. Like, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do with my life. I watched a guy get up and sing this great music and share these great stories. That really started the trajectory of my life of just pursuing all things music. So my mother taught me things on the piano. I, you know, guys in the church taught me things on the drums. and. And uh, the difference was it wasn't a hobby for me. It was like if I really liked something, I went all in. So I would practice hours a day. In seventh grade, I realized I could sing. And that really started the process of knowing that this was my calling, knowing that this was what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. And it's what I've been doing for the last 25 years now. I worked hard on this, man. Years of playing guitar. Come on, bro. Appreciate the help here, though. Thanks. Okay, do you guys understand that we're starting in 10 minutes? Right. News that would have been great to know earlier. Hard stop at nine. That would have We've been before and have had amazing times in Seoul. This one was great. It had its challenges because we were 
basically parachuting into an existing festival there, and we were to headline that, and we had arranged to be able to film and document everything we were doing and record the record there. I remember a couple really challenging things. One, there were sound challenges, as there always are in something like this and all these moving parts. Is there like a system tech? Do you guys have a Digico system tech here or something, anything that anybody knows how to work this thing? He knows, he's technical. Okay, yeah. the direct outs are working. The audio system wasn't working properly, things weren't patched in. The consoles wouldn't talk to each other, so sound check was out the door and we had to kind of improvise on that one. And then just trying to explain that to the hosts who were speaking Korean and we had translators between us. It was probably from the outside looking in quite comedic. Okay. Yeah. So here, 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 position, slow moving here, down. Perfect. Ah, yes, sir. Okay. That's it. Tell him that's as wide as I want him to go. Yeah, wide as wide as well. Here, here, here is uh, tilt up. Tilt up. Tilt up. Yeah. Zoom in even further. Z even further. That's about as tight as I want him to go. Yeah, 그 정도가 제일 타이트고요. 아까 말한 게 제일 wide. When we lose the heads, when we lose your foreground, the shot isn't as interesting. 그래서 이제 관객들 이제 머리가 없어지면. Uh, he said we gotta wait for Israel Newton because there's a sound checking problem. Nothing is patched. Waiting patiently. Ready to serve the Lord whenever we get the call. Okay, here's the thing. Without our gear working, we cannot perform tonight. We flew all the way from the U.S. to worship with you guys tonight. We've come up with a different plan. That's going to speed the process up. A lot of that stuff was, was miraculous, things that came together last minute. And that is a testimony of a resilient team that just goes, hey, we're going to flow with whatever happens. Guys just getting it done. Tokyo today? Kind of. <laughs> you slept, you, you fell asleep, didn't you? You didn't? <laughs> I get asked a lot what's the fear? Like, what is the thing that you just are afraid of? I'm not afraid of much. I really feel like faith is the absence of fear. So I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to things I'm worried about. Feeling tired, feeling sluggish, feeling the jet lag, feeling 
no sleep last night in Tokyo and early flight this morning and sound check challenges and checking into the hotel challenges. And, and you get out there, you see this hunger and this thirst for the presence of God. And it just, I don't know, it does something. Suddenly you got all this energy, all this focus. It's hard to come, come down off of that. There is a definite renewable energy and quality that comes from being in the presence of God. It was amazing we even got on the stage because at one point our production manager pointed out that there was something happening with the trussing that was really bowing uh, not well on the, on the back of the stage and he saw that as a major hazard and so there was, a, there was still a, a question right up to, to going on. So here's the situation. We've got a... Um... We've got an unsafe stage tonight. Um, we've got an LED wall putting a big bow bend in the main truss that holds the roof of the stage up. So for us, it's unsafe to go on, so we're going to get that LED screen pulled down so we can make it safely home to our families. But if it starts to sway in the middle, I'm going to keep my eye on it. If it starts to move, we're going to stop. I know it's been up all night, so it's fine, but that, that there's no center support on this cross rig, which is really odd. Um. I think there are certain things just, <laughs> just designed to break you down. I think TSA is designed to break you down on this, on this particular type of grind, you know, homeland security and, and you know, Customs and security check-in and all these different places, man. It's it. It definitely can take mo the momentum of the night before and the euphoria of the night before and just crush it to complete melancholy. You start feeling homesick. You start missing your kids. You start missing the comforts of, you know, the things at home. You know, it's moments that like. Like that, I mean, they, they seem small now talking about them, but in the moment you're just going, man, this can get old so quick. But then you get out into that environment that you know you belong and you connect with people who are hungry for an experience and it makes it all worth it. Did he fall asleep? Galley. Yeah. What's the next question? Favorite song is hands down. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. I mean, that was a praise and worship anthem. Let me think of this song, because because this song got me through. I am a friend of God. 
I love that song. Where would I be? He can't sing nothing that I don't like. I know who I am. I know. I'm not good with titles all the time. I got to sing the song. I know who I am. I am yours. I have about 20 favorites, so. Deeper. Deeper and deeper. Our favorite song would be Alpha and Omega. Yeah. Uh, Alpha and Omega. I sing it all the time. A favorite Israel Houghton song? I don't have one. There are so many of them. Um, I have to say I am a friend of God. This other one, where would I be? It's not yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, you could say Alpha and Omega, just it embraces, you know, our God. Really, when I think about just his body of work, I'm, I'm just a fan of his work and just a fan of his voice and his guitar playing because he can pull out that acoustic and kill you with it, you know, so, uh, and the drums. Have you seen him on the drums? I have a person. Yeah, man, he can play the drums, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the duality of, uh, you know, being mixed. So. <laughs> Is this thing on? <laughs> <laughs>It's fascinating to think, okay, the first project we did new season was the biggest thing we had ever done. It was like, how are we gonna pull this off? And and looking back now, it's so funny, just from a scale standpoint, logistics, economics, like it's just everyone has has grown. So we did that and we did a studio record called Real, followed that up with another live record with uh, Live From Another Level and a DVD that accompanied that and then uh, going to South Africa was like, at that point, was like the biggest massive thing we could have ever imagined doing. It ended up being, you know, obviously a very special record to us, our first Grammy, our second gold record, and that has, you know, started a, a, a chain of, of events kind of with, with the records that we've done since by doing Deeper, which we also won for, by doing Power of One and Love God, Love People, which we also won Grammys for, and then Jesus at the Center which we won an award for. Thankful that those five records in a row all won awards and, and made a lot of impact globally, which I think is what pushed us into doing another live record and being able to go to Asia. All this groundwork that has been laid. And each project has just been, whoa. A lot of miles, man. A lot of miles for being in full-time ministry the last 25 years. But uh, since I've been doing this full-time, I mean, I think it's three million miles or so with, with United by themselves, uh, over a million with Delta, even half a million on American, which I can't stand. I don't like American Airlines at all. Thank you very much. We're in Manila, Philippines. The Arnetta, the Arnetta Coliseum. We are in the arena where Muhammad Ali fought Joe, Joe Frazier. Frazier. Thriller in Manila. Yeah. Thriller in Manila. Yes. Thriller in Manila. The Thriller in Manila. The Thriller in Manila, Philippines. It don't get no more real than this. I didn't know that. You did? Mm -hmm. No. Super exciting, man. Mm -hmm. And this is the last night of the Live in Asia tour, and we're just excited to be here. This is the last night, and so. You know, Kevin's gonna have like 14 drum solos and no, absolutely he's not. gonna jump off the drums I'm gonna and play my, my Amber's gonna go part. crazy on the violin. I'm gonna stage dive and crowd surf immediately, as soon as I can. First song. First song. Wait, I'm, wait, on, wait. I'm on push. Israel, stand aside real quick. I need to stage dive. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> it's all worth it. You know, and, and again, it, it has taken its toll. It, 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 can, it can wear down the individual. It can wear down the family. You know, I'm very, very fortunate to have a great, amazing family that realizes this is not just dad's calling. This is just not my husband's calling. This is, this is our calling as a family. I've always gotten along with my parents. I've never, it's never like we, we went through a rough patch and now we kind of <laughs> like each other. I, they've always been my best friends. Like I'm that one person, like my parents are my best friends. Mm -hmm. My dad's like a professor. Like any question I have, anything I wanna know, I can come to him and I can ask him and he has the greatest answer. So I think traveling and worshiping and learning from these guys musically and vocally, I'm grateful that he has given me the opportunity to be able to, to come and experience this with him and I couldn't imagine doing anything else right now. To be here with him, to be here with my family, it's been 
it's awesome. And I think the thing that thrills me the most is that my kids, you know, Mariah sang on this record and sang with the team and just did a great job and so proud of her. You know, I see my, my younger kids, you know, Lily and Sonny, really pursuing uh, music and, and ministry as well. Not because we forced that on them, but because it's something they really want to do. And I'm watching just this next generation rise up to do what's in their heart to do. And, and that's what thrills me to keep going on. That's what thrills me to do projects at this scale right now so that there is something for them to jump from and to, to ramp off of. And uh, that is what gets me out of bed every single day. People are quick to say, especially in a social media age, this is who this person is. I know who I am, and I would consider myself a, a very regular person. Beyond that, like, I love leading worship, and a big part of leading worship is being looked through, not being looked at. Please don't look at me. Let me, let me show you who you ought to see. But as a man, I think, I. I want to be marked as a man by somebody who's just a good friend. When people say of me, that's the guy you want in your corner if you're in trouble. That's, that's a friend. That's a guy you can call at 2 in the morning if you have to. It's not about what I do on stage. It's not about songs I've written. It really is about who I am. And, and at the core of all of that is somebody who really loves God, really loves people, really loves his family. And the music is secondary to all of that. This is, this is what I do, this is who I am. And if you stripped away accolades and, and radio play and record sales and awards, there is no doubt in my mind that this is what I would still do. I, I would pay to do it.
My man, you know, you're one of my true friends. Not just in the industry, just you know how we get out. I appreciate you, man, and I love you dearly. the legend. Thank you so much for blessing Asia. Thank you so much for coming to Indonesia, to Jakarta, and just pour yourself, your heart, your songs, and uh, you really bless us, man, and uh, we're just grateful. Thank you. As a friend, I'm just so grateful for you, man. Love you. It's been a long journey, man, and we ain't done yet. I'm loving where we are. When we first started, I had hair. I didn't have gray. I was about half of who I am. I have gained about two Backstreet Boys in weight, but I just want you to know I'm so proud of you, man, the way that uh, God has anointed and blessed you and the family. Man, let's just keep the party going. Let's keep doing music. If I have to come in on a walker, with false teeth in my mouth, I'm down. We're gonna keep making music to change and, and to affect the culture for Jesus. Love you, man, for real, and you know that. I totally appreciate you. I've, I've told you a million times, you know, how, how much I appreciate you. We've been through a lot, um, from the, the chicken getting caught in your throat uh, to driving, fast trying to get to airports and catch planes and just I will always give my 110,000 percent. God bless. Hey Iz, just want to thank you for giving uh, some Australian guys from the other side of the planet the opportunity to work with you over the last few years. Thanks for trusting your dream to us. I just want to thank you for it. I can attest to the fact that Israel Houghton Everything, all of the worship leaders now bear a mark that you have placed. You are, have been such a blessing to the body of Christ. I'm honored to serve you, and I love you, man. I'm just proud of him because his words really are the words that we as praisers and we as worshipers want to say to God. That's your legacy, dude. You do it so well and I'm so proud of you. Hey Israel, uh, just wanted to say thanks so much for uh, letting me be part of this Alive in Asia tour. I hope we get to do it again soon and um, thanks so much. I'm grateful, I'm blessed, and I speak continued blessing into you and your family's life. I'm just blessed, man. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your life, you and Melissa, and um, thank you for always giving, always serving, and always thinking about others. want to look at the camera and say, I love you, light skin. Keep the faith and keep the lights on. Is this thing on?